Hi, welcome to Construction Point. My name is Toshibe Godfrey and today we shall be discussing how to determine the depth of any foundation. In order to determine the depth of any foundation, there are some variables that should be considered. 1. The bearing capacity of the soil. 2. The total structural load, load to be exerted on the ground. 3. We talk of the soil type. There are other factors like the groundwater level, the adjacency of the, on the, of the structure to other building, that is the foundation to other existing building. But in all this, while these considerations are being done, it is best to determine the depth of foundation using soil investigation result. This soil investigation provides us with more details. Like soil, with soil investigation, the bearing capacity of each layer of the soil can be provided to us and many other variables are considered during soil investigation. But in absence of this, remember that the most important thing is to make sure that the foundation is seated in a place that both the shrinking and the swelling of the soil does not affect it. In the absence of soil investigation, the formula helps us to determine the minimum depth of a foundation. But the problem with the Rankine formula is that it doesn't consider the weight or the pressure or the total structural load that will be exerted on the soil by the structure. But in this, personally, sometimes I use Rankine formula to checkmate even my soil investigation result. So I'm going to be showing you how to use Rankine formula to determine the minimum depth of your foundation. Check this out. What we have here is what we call the Rankine formula, which helps us to determine the minimum depth of any foundation. This does not consider the load from the, the structure to the foundation. So here we have here H equals to this, where H is the minimum depth of the foundation in meters, then P is the gross bearing capacity of the, the soil in kilonewton per meter squared. This can also be in kilogram per meter squared. Then we have our file, which is angle of repose or internal friction of the soil. Then we have the density of the soil, which is in kilonewton per meter cube. So now, if these parameters are given, example now, in my site, I have a wet clay soil. So I, I know the bearing capacity of my site. Then I know the angle of repose, which this can be given. They, they, they have constants. They, I know the angle of repose of my site. Then I know the density of the soil I'm working with. So if I have all these parameters, I have the, dense, I have the soil bearing capacity, I have the density of the soil, I have the, uh, I have the angle of repose, I can quickly substitute to get. So I'll be solving this example now to determine the minimum depth I am supposed to dig in my site or excavate in my site to make sure that it's correct and I'll be solving with the parameters I obtained from my site. Check this out. So if this parameters is provided for us and we are about to find the minimum depth of our foundation. In my site, I have a very terrible bearing capacity of 100 kN per meter squared. Of course, this is the density of my soil, 16 kN per meter cube, and I have my file here, the angle of repose to be 90. So if I'm to determine the, the minimum depth I'm supposed to excavate at my site, let me substitute this to this formula. So I have minimum depth is equals to 100 kN all over um, 16, 16, then sine 19 all over 1 plus sine 19 all square so if we simplify this we are going to have that the minimum depth of my foundation is going to be 1.56 meters which can be approximated to be 1.6 meters so what i'm supposed to dig the minimum depth i'm supposed to excavate at my site is 1.6 meter i hope you learned from this thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more of this type of video. Thank you.